Hello, in this tutorial we're going to explain D3 nests in under five minutes. There's a lot to talk about, so let's get started. Nests are powerful data manipulation tools. If you understand them, you can save lots of time, not just with data visualizations, but for any tasks you have that involve data. Now, nests are meant for large groups of data. So for this tutorial, I've gone ahead and put together the raw data for all the properties and the game of Monopoly. You can find it at the URL at the top. So if you'd like to follow up at home, copy the data, then go to the website d3js.org and paste the data in as follows. Type their data equals the data we just copied. And now we have all the information about Monopoly at our disposal. So a nest is like a conveyor belt. You define what the steps are on the conveyor belt and then you put the data in. The conveyor belt does its thing and outputs a brand new data object. This is better demonstrated. So in the game of Monopoly, you have various properties. What if, though, we wanted to group these properties by their color group and then find out the total price of the entire color group? Well, we could write custom JavaScript to do that, but that might take a while. Nests do exactly this thing, so we're going to use a nest to accomplish this task. First, we're going to create a nest, our conveyor belt for turning the data into our new data format. So we'll say their property nest equals d3.nest and we've created it. Now we need to define the keys which are the individual steps that the data goes through. Think of these as arms in a conveyor belt that attach an individual piece or reconfigure a component. We'll say property nest dot key and we'll define a function. Function d where d is the data and we'll say return d dot group. Now in order to activate our nest, we use the entries function, which whatever we pass to it will it will output a transformed version of that. So we'll say property nest.entry data.properties, which are is our monopoly properties. And it outputs this object. As we can see, here are the properties grouped by their color. This has already accomplished a lot. From a data visualization perspective, we could now visualize the individual colors as, say, stacked bars. Very cool, but there's more. What if we wanted to know the total price of each of the properties? Once again, we could write some custom JavaScript to add up the cost of the three properties in the orange group and output it, but Nest can do this for us with a rollup. With a D3 nest rollup, the data is transformed or it can be changed. Whereas with keys, the data is simply rearranged. Let's add a rollup to our nest. Remember that rollups and keys are applied in the following manner. First, all keys are applied to the data in the order they are defined, and then all rollups are applied. So we'll say property nest dot rollup and we'll say function s, where s is the set of data, for example, the three orange groups, and we'll say return d3.sum, so the sum of s, and we'll add an accessor function, function d, return d.oprice, which is the price of the house, and will apply this rollup. Oops, had an error there. So we'll apply the rollup to the property nest. And now, if we call the entries on the data, we get the total cost of all the properties. We've just saved a lot of time. Notice the original data object has not changed. Nests only create new objects. So with this information, you should be able to apply as much uh, or as little as you want in the world of D3 nests. We've only scratched the surface of what you can do when combining multiple keys and multiple rollups. So we'll leave that as an exercise for future tutorials. All the best.